class is now in session. I am Professor Hockey, and today it is time for my annual trade deadline preview video for the San Jose Sharks. The trade deadline is exactly one week away, and this time around, it is actually rather interesting, probably the most interesting trade deadline that the Sharks have had since the 1819 season, which of course was the last time they were competitive. And so it was a question of which of the rentals available at the trade deadline would the Sharks pick up these past couple of years, and in particular last year, there was wasn't really a lot of moving pieces for the San Jose Sharks. I mean, last year, the biggest name that the Sharks were looking to sell off was their backup goaltender, Devin Dubnik. And so there didn't seem to be a lot of assets that could be coming towards the San Jose Sharks. This season, however, that changes as there are multiple you know, decently sized names to massive names that are in play for the San Jose Sharks. And starting off right at the top here is Jacob Middleton. His name really only came into play over these past couple of weeks. At the start of the season, Jacob Middleton kind of came almost out of nowhere, going from 7th to 8th type of defenseman for the San Jose Sharks into a solid top 4 defenseman. He's played minutes with Eric Carlson this season. Recently, he's played minutes with Brent Burns this season, and he has done quite the admirable job in those roles. He is also the type of player that a lot of teams look to pick up when heading into the playoffs. A tough player who can play tough minutes, who can dish out hits, who can make blocks. Jacob Middleton is third in terms of Sharks defensemen for uh, hits per 60 minutes. He is second in Sharks defensemen for blocked shots per 60 minutes, only behind Mario Ferraro. And he also gets a pretty decent amount of shorthanded ice time, third in terms of defensemen behind Burns and Ferraro on a team that is one of of the tops in the league in terms of penalty killing. In fact, ever since, well, not ever since, but Ferraro has been out with an injury recently, and so Middleton has obviously stepped up even further in this shorthanded role, and the Sharks' penalty kill hasn't really looked any better than it has as of late over these past few games. In fact, the Sharks' special team is really the only thing that has looked good over these past few weeks of games, and Middleton is playing a big part in that. And so, as a restricted free agent on an extremely cheap deal, there is a lot of teams that are actually rather interested in picking up Jacob Middleton to be a possible bottom pairing defenseman for themselves to play 13-14 minutes a night and be able to step in potentially into a top four role if there are a couple of injuries and like I said he is the perfect player for what teams are looking for at this time of year when it comes to potential assets coming back for the San Jose Sharks if it was just Jacob Middleton straight up for anything I would imagine a third round pick maybe pushing a second round pick I do not think that Jacob Middleton is worth a first round pick however having said that it is possible that the San Jose Sharks could end up doing something similar to what they did with Barclay Goodrow a couple of years ago which of course Goodrow was not worth a, worth a first round pick then however the Sharks packaged him with a third round pick to get the first round pick of the Tampa Bay Lightning which was essentially moving up 40 or so spaces in the draft while the Lightning ended up moving down about 40 or so spaces so if the Sharks wanted to do something similar to that package Middleton with a fourth or a third and get a first round pick from some team that would definitely be a possibility teams that seem to be interested in him well there honestly are a lot of them but you could look at the Tampa Bay Lightning going for that three peat the Boston Bruins the Florida Panthers definitely could look into him as well the St. Louis Blues he is that type of player not only that any playoff team would be looking for but particularly the St. Louis Blues as they obviously are a hard-hitting physical team as the Sharks certainly learned back in the 20 19 playoff series so Middleton a very interesting name and honestly in terms of chances of getting traded I would say he is the player on this list who has the highest possibility of moving honestly I'd be rather surprised if he was still a San Jose Shark this time next week Next on the list, we have Alex Barabanov, an interesting name who hasn't necessarily been a part of many trade rumors, but he is a decent player who is an unrestricted free agent at the end of this season, meaning he is technically a possibility of being moved. Having said that, I'd rather not see Barabanov moved for a multitude of reasons, and the main one being is that his contract can actually be signed pretty... Uh, 
uh, cheaply, I would say, and not with a lot of term. You see, the issue for the San Jose Sharks and when it comes to a player like Tomas Hurdle is that you would be forced to sign him to a massive deal, an eight-year extension, because he is a player who is so good that he can command that, and you can't really say no. When it comes to Barabanov, he's rather unproven at the NHL level, so he doesn't really have that prestige to be able to just come up to Doug Wilson and say, you know what, give me eight years or I walk. Doug Wilson might just laugh in his face and let him go because he's not going to get eight years. Well, he's not going to get seven years on the open market, meaning he can actually give Barabanov a much more reasonable four-year deal at, you know, four million dollars or something along those lines he, since he is a cons- he is going to be on pace for about 50 points this season as a solid second liner but when it comes to potentially being in the trade rumors there is a possibility that he does get moved in terms of assets coming back for a barabound off trade i would suspect maybe a second round pick maybe a pretty decent prospect i'm not sure if barabound off alone could command a first round pick maybe if a team is really desperate for some sort of offensive depth in their top or in their middle six I would say they would be willing to part with a first round pick but it's kind of hard to imagine and I don't think that the Sharks unless they can get a really strong asking price for him would actually move on from this player the final person to talk about of course the biggest name in free agency I would say going in to this trade deadline would be Tomas Hurdle there are other big unrestricted free agents I would say players like Johnny Goodrow and uh, JT Miller but both those players are likely to stick around with those teams because of course the Flames are first place in the Pacific Division they want to stay as strong in, as possible going into the playoffs and JT Miller is on also a at least playoff competitive Vancouver Canucks team who are within just a couple of points uh there is Claude Giroux definitely is an option but I almost feel as though recently Tomas Hurdle seems to be a bigger name in the trade uh talks than Claude Giroux. The thing is, is that recently in the past couple of weeks, we have learned that the Sharks seem to be much more keen in trying to extend Tomas Hurdle than actually trying to trade him. Big the, the big talks are at the moment that they aren't really even entertaining any trade offers from any teams. And honestly, when it comes to the Tomas Hurdle decision here, this is going to be a decision that is like essentially a turning point for the franchise as a whole and will decide the San Jose Sharks futures over the next five years and potentially even further than that. If the San Jose Sharks are to sign Tomas Hurdle to an eight-year extension, it essentially tells the fan base that we are okay trying to be mediocre and hoping for some sort of miracle. We just saw last season the Sharks try to make some improvements as much as they can with the massive contract that they're currently dealing with. They bought out Martin Jones to pick up an entirely new goaltending tandem. They tandem. They tried to shore up the offensive depth by picking up a multitude of players like Benino, like Cogliano, like Lane Peterson. They uh, made a couple of moves on the defensive side of things as well. They had players developing. They had these the uh, the development and the drafting, of course, of a player like William Eklund. They made a lot of moves trying to improve this team. And in the end, while the Sharks are marginally better than what they were last season, they still are not a playoff team and so going into next season even with no moves made in free agency is there a is it an impossibility that the Sharks would be able to make the playoffs? Well, absolutely not. You retain Tomas Hurdle. Let's say you have Couture uh, doesn't decline anymore and maybe has a bit of a resurgence for himself. You have a solid Timo Meyer and Tomas Hurdle. You get William Eklund up there and let's say he develops extremely well. Then you have Barabanov. You can put him in there. Maybe LeBanc has a rebound. Maybe Dahlin does very well and steps forward next season. Maybe uh, Thomas Bordalo comes over and he plays quite well and ends up getting a third line center spot. But the problem is is that there's so many ifs in this particular situation you're also asking Brent Burns to no longer decline as a 37 year old defenseman you're asking Vlasic to still be somewhat serviceable you're asking Eric Carlson to not get injured for an entire season you're asking Aiden Hill to be a very good starter at the NHL level it just would take a lot of minor miracles for this team to be able to make the playoffs come next season it is not impossible it's not even necessarily improbable but it is rather 
rather unlikely, I would say. And so signing Tomas Hurdle, you're resigning yourself to trying to be able to get there. And I don't know if the Sharks are going to be able to do that. On the other hand, if you were to actually trade Tomas Hurdle at this trade deadline, that is also declaring to the fan base that you are clearly dedicated to trying to rebuild this team over the next few years, which is why the San Jose Sharks are so hesitant in trading Tomas Hurdle. The fact of the matter is, is that besides the Buffalo Sabres, the San Jose Sharks are the franchise with the steepest drop in terms of attendance to their games. And the fact of the matter is, is that at the end of the day, the NHL is a business. The San Jose Sharks are a business and trading a player like Tomas Hurdle is clearly telling the fan base that you're not looking to be competitive over the next few years and so why should the fan base come and show up to watch a game of a team that they know is probably not going to win and is probably not going to be able to make the playoffs I saw a lot of talk that oh well the reason for the Sharks drop off in terms of attendance is the COVID situation and that very well might be true but the thing is is that once COVID sort of passes over which is very possible that this happens by the start of next season you want to try and encourage those fans who have taken the time off to not show up because of COVID to come back to the shark tank. And when you're icing a non-competitive team, it's going to be very difficult to convince them to do that. And so that is why the Sharks are so hesitant to move on from Tomas Hurdle and why they seem so set in trying to keep Hurdle on the squad. But the problem is, is that no extension has yet come in. And the worst case scenario, the absolute worst, worst case scenario for the San Jose Sharks is that the Sharks do not trade him at the deadline and then are unable to extend him either moving up to the draft, at which point the Sharks very well could end up losing Tomas Hurdle for nothing. And that is a really bad thing for the Sharks to have happen to them. If we take a player like Alex Barabanov, let's say the Sharks don't trade him, they don't manage to extend him, and he walks in free agency, that's not a good thing. Obviously, the Sharks would have liked to get some assets out of him, but it's not the end of the world. But for a player like Hurdle, who can command a first-round pick, who can command a very good prospect in return for his deal at this trade deadline, losing him for absolutely nothing would be a huge step back for where the franchise currently is. And so the question now would be, should the Sharks extend? extend hurdle what's my opinion on it well it really hasn't changed from when I've said it in the midpoint of the season and when I said it at the start of the season I still believe that the Sharks absolutely should trade Tomas Hurdle the fact that an extension hasn't come in should be worrying for most fans not because uh is not because that they should be trading him or anything like that, but because that you do not want him to walk, like I said. And I feel as though a trade is a pretty safe bet to do. Yes, it means you're trying to go for that rebuild, but you open up spots, you get a good draft pick, maybe you draft high, maybe you draft low, depending on how that uh, the team whose first round pick you acquire actually ends up doing in the playoffs. But generally, you're going to end up with a very solid prospect. And I think in five years time the Sharks would be better off if you know if we look back at this particular moment having traded Hurdle than having extended him but that is of course just my opinion for assets that would return like I said a first round pick a blue chip prospect but who which teams are potentially in play for that uh, there is the Boston Bruins that is talked about though the Bruins don't necessarily have a lot of interesting prospects to pick up meaning they would have to just pick up draft picks from them I know a lot of people talk about the Minnesota Wild and trying to get Marco Rossi from them. Rossi is a very strong prospect for the Wild, though I don't know if they'd really be willing to part with him even in a trade like this one because they're probably quite bullish on him. But just generally... Just know that there would be a massive haul, a massive return in a Tomas Hurdle trade if that were to come over this next week. But since there aren't really any talks for it, don't necessarily expect him to move, even if you believe this to be the correct move. But that will do it for this preview. The trade deadline, like I said, it is or it definitely has the potential to be very interesting from a San Jose Sharks perspective, but it also very well could come and go with just, you know, a Jacob Middleton trade for a for second round pick or something like that and that would be that for the Sharks so don't necessarily get your hopes up for a very very interesting day but know that you might wake up Monday morning and see some really big news from the Sharks class dismissed